The image of the journalist in the public mind is extremely important because it affects something as large as democracy. If you fail to trust the news gatherers in a democracy who are getting you the information you need to know to make intelligent, economic, political, personal decisions, if you think they are corrupt, if your image of the journalist is that they're villains and they're out to get you, then you're not going to believe the information they give you, and that's catastrophe. And only in recent years have we seen what a catastrophe that can be. The image of the journalist in popular culture, or I. JPC is a project of the Norman Lear Center, which I started in 2000. We generally emphasize the fictional representations of journalists. Film is still the number one research topic around the world, and the one that most of the research has been done on. The image of the journalist in television is my particular uh, joy. I think that's very important because, in my opinion, TV influences people probably more than movies. We do the Im image of the journalist in novels, plays, video games, music, any popular culture, any aspect of popular culture, and it's been very successful. Everybody talks about how people feel about journalists, but how many people visit a newsroom? or no journalists? How many people go to a broadcast news station or an internet news site? How do they know so much about journalism? In the movies, in television, novels, they read about them, they see them. Now, was that a true image? Who cares? That was the image that they based their belief on what journalism was in the United States and elsewhere. The number one image of the journalist that most people remember has nothing to do with movies about journalism, has nothing to do with novels or TV shows featuring journalists. What it has to do is with these pack of journalists chasing after the hero of the film with microphones and tape recorders and notebooks, just running after them and interfering in their lives, invading their privacy and going after them. That is the image most people have when you say the image of the journalist, they think of the yellow press, the scandal mongers, the tabloid press, but mostly the paparazzi. Now this is 5% uh, of news media at most, and yet that's the image most people have. The image of the journalist has always been terrible. I always go back to 1929, for example, in Five Star Final, one of the most devastating portraits of a journalist ever created. This up and I want pictures. Do you get me? I want pictures. Yes, Mr. Randall. Very good. Oh, Mr. Randall. Mr. Randall, give them the address. Horrible people who run a tabloid, who do terrible things. I mean, they cause a couple to commit suicide based on the story that they're printing. There were a lot of things I didn't like around here. What's your objection to all this? I guess I just don't understand newspaper work. All the same. All the same. I think you can always get people interested in the crucifixion of a woman. When people talk about what are the great images of the journalist, they usually go to film. They talk about Ace in the Hole, they talk about the front page, they talk about a lot of the great journalism films, broadcast news, recently Spotlight. I don't agree with that. I think television is a great influence maker on our population. And when I think of the image of the journalist and the power it's had, I think of two television shows. Both featuring women, Mary Tyler Moore Show and Murphy Brown. Why are they so influential? Every week we visit with them and we get to know them. I can't even explain to young people, for example, how powerful Mary Tyler Moore Show was in just changing our feeling, not only about journalists, but about a lot of things. It was the first time an anchor man was featured on television and they featured him as a buffoon. That image has not left us. Ron Burgundy is a perfect example of a modern representation of the anchor person as fool. It was the first time that a family didn't have to be a nuclear family Family, but a newsroom family. Mary Tyler Moore's show featured a woman who was not divorced, who was not widowed, and who was not dependent on a male. This was unheard of in television. Now you move to the 1980s, Murphy Brown, and you have somebody who is, again, totally different in the landscape of television. She's a drunk. She becomes a single mother. She develops breast cancer. She's vile to people. She does anything she can to get a story. 25. What's your background? Ah, master's degree from Harvard Business School. Working background. 
three years in public television. It's I ran my- It's getting worse. I'm sorry, Mr. Silver. She's not a very attractive character, and yet she is the star of this show. Now, there is something different today in that the public discourse has gotten so involved in journalism and the media in fa false news and alternate facts and fake news and all of these terms they're throwing around that does create a different kind of image of the journalist that we really haven't had before because in the past nobody ever saw a journalist at work nobody ever went to a newsroom to see them work in a newspaper or a broadcasting station so they really didn't have any idea except through films and television how this process worked but today they see all these so-called journalists, and some are real and some are not so real, going on the news shows and just yelling at each other. And I think that creates a very negative image of the journalists. They're looking like people that are just angry all the time and don't know anything, giving false information. Is the media flawless? No, they aren't. They make a lot of mistakes, but they're the best source of information we have. And once you lose trust in them, then it's hopeless. If you're not believing reliable information, if you're not going to believe the news gatherers who have nothing to gain except to give you the information, they have no criteria, other criteria except here's the facts, here's the story, do, do with it what you may. If you don't believe these people, if you think that their information is suspect, then what do you base your decisions on? Rumor, gossip, and now the popular phrase, false news, alternate facts. So it's a dichotomy. It's a very interesting problem that I think the news media has in the future of convincing people who don't watch or read them that they are good people doing a good job.